Well, hey there, welcome back to Mantic Stringworks. So, today on the workbench, we have this really nice Gibson Les Paul it's from 2012. It's a Les Paul Traditional. I like the tuning keys. <laughs> yeah, everything that you'd expect from a Les Paul. Now, the owner has brought it to me because of this. The tailpiece stud or post, you can see, has been uh, ratted out, <laughs> if you will. Someone trying to loosen it or tighten it, maybe without loosening the strings, right? Uh, so the owner can't move it. This one is fine. But he thinks it's cross-threaded in there, and that's why. So we're going to have to uh, figure out how to get that off. I have a couple of things here that might help us. <laughs> All right, stay tuned. All right, so first things first, uh, to get this off, you know, get this out without causing any more damage, first of all, we have to loosen the strings, right? So we have to get, take the string tension off. And you should always do that when you're raising or lowering either the bridge or the tailpiece. Now, if you're just making adjustments, you can just detune it, you know, a couple of steps, it's fine. But if you're trying to remove it, <laughs> well, then you definitely need to uh, take all the slack, right, all the tension out of there. So we'll do that first before I take the strings completely off. Now the owner wants to keep these strings, they're relatively new. So we'll see if I can do this without uh, taking the strings off. What do you think? <laughs> so we have a wrap around tailpiece, but you can also go straight through, right? The owner's done this because they prefer the shallower brake angle than the tight one. When it's up against, it comes out from the bottom. Sometimes it touches the bridge. You can adjust for that though. So. It's not a huge deal, but anyways, that's how the owner has it. Okay, so these are loose enough to move this around, not to take off yet though. Now, most often than not, <laughs> the reason why you can have a slotted screw hole or slot like that that's all ratted out is because he used a screwdriver that is too small. You can see it turns around in there, right? So you definitely want to have a screwdriver that is the same size. Here's the, <coughs> here's the other one that's still in good condition, but still, that's no good. <clears throat> Even this big screwdriver here, you can see the blade's a lot bigger. There's still slop. You know, definitely whoop, move that one, no problem. But I still don't like that. So a little trick, of course, is you can take your Gibson cloth <laughs> or any other cloth. <coughs> Excuse my coughing. Now you put it over, and I like to drape it over too. Now you be careful. And you find the slot. There we go. And you can see how it catches in there, right? Now I'm going to push down, and you can see, look at that. It just turns nicely. And it'll bunch up and catch, and that's fine. Again, just be careful. So I'm raising this up now. Oop, you gotta watch it doesn't slide around. So I'll do the other side at the same time. Again, make sure you catch it in the slot. And this one definitely is a lot easier to move. I'm really applying no pressure at all. It's just coming right up. Yeah, I'm getting a little tension back on the strings because we're raising this up. So I'm going to loosen the strings off the tuning post at the other end. All right, so now we have no tension again. All right, let's continue along here. Again, I'm going to keep my fingers around here, make sure I know where the blade of the screwdriver is <laughs> at all times. Now we're going to get to a point where probably can turn it by hand. Uh, not really. And we want to be able to release this tailpiece, right? So do I have enough slack? I'm getting there. So I'm going to put this cloth down here in case this thing wants to go flying off for whatever reason. 
There we go. Oh, look at that. Still need, uh, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna put this, this aside, so it doesn't get out of the way. Now, now I can turn this. So this one obviously is fine. This one, look at that. So one I can turn by hand, just fingers. <laughs> this one's totally stuck in there. So I think the owner's right <clears throat> that in an effort to try and loosen or tighten this stud here, it's totally stripped out. You know, it shouldn't be that difficult to turn. So I probably can do it now. Oh, look at that. I can't even... I can't even, I can barely, barely turn, there we go, just, oh my god, I'm right at the end, that's why, okay, so, yeah, hard to tell why it's stuck particularly, but it's definitely not in good shape, so I'm going to see if we can keep the bushing in there and just replace, you have to buy them in sets, but replace the stud here, the post. We put that back and we're going to take this bushing out. So I'll show you a couple of ways to try. All right, so I have this nut bushing puller, you know, knob puller, this device. So basically, and I'll use the one that's in there just to show. And I always put an extra piece of leather there. It does have a little rubber bottom, but I think the leather's better. So what you have to do is you hook this part underneath the shaft here. So you get it in there. There we go. Can you see that? <laughs> and I'm using, you know, the existing. No, I don't want to pull this one up. <laughs> but you pull it up till it's tight. And then you just keep turning. It's going to pull that bushing up. So that's one way. I'm just going to take the bridge off. I'm just going to mark T for trouble. <laughs> Sometimes you flip them around and you wonder why your intonation is all funny. I'll put that aside. Okay, so if you have a device like this, this dedicated bushing and knob puller, that's great. But if you don't, there's this little trick too, which is pretty cool. So you drop a screw down that's not as long as the Bushing is deep, of course. Now it only works if your bushing is has a hole down the bottom, so it's actually pushing against the body of the guitar. So you put that down there, and then you use you know, here in this case, I'll use this stud, and you screw it in. And as you screw down, it pushes down on this screw, and then the bushing theoretically comes up, right? But before I do that, I just want to go around. Just release anything that might be stuck here. I can see a little bit of finish out. See that? There you go. So I'm just going to gently scrape around the bushing. Don't want it catching on the edge, really. I'm going to make sure I go all around. Okay, now that I finished scraping here, I just saw one more little bit. So I was just trying to expose these little sort of knurled edges here. I don't want them catching on anything. Okay. <clears throat> so again, you don't have to go quickly with this type of operation. So I'm going to take the screw, and this is a number six, three quarter inch deep. Again, it just has to be something that's not as deep. And you can take a, you know, here's a stick, right? I'll put it in. That tells me how deep it is, and you can see that my screw is about quarter inch, three eighths shorter. So the flat end, drop it in. Now I'm going to start to thread the post back on. <coughs> Until I feel it start to hit that screw. Yep. Now. And again, for the sake of video, I'm not going to cover this, and we're replacing this. 
Let's see if this comes out. It should start to push it out. Oh, here we go. Again, I'm being careful with the screw, the screwdriver. Look at that. See it coming out? <coughs> That's how you take a bushing out without any expensive tools. <laughs> Should be able to pull it up there, nice and clean. Like, look at that. So, those are those knurls I was talking about, prevents it from spinning around in the body. So, I'm just gonna put that aside, and I have a little stick with magnets on the end. Oh, there we go. <laughs> and there's a ground wire down in there, so that's good. Okay, so now I have to order up uh, a post here. And again, it's going to come with the, the bushing, but I'll order one up and we'll replace that as soon as we can. Okay, so we're back with this Les Paul Traditional and I've ordered a new anchor bushing and the stud or post chrome. And I'm going to take the existing one out of this side. So I want to make sure <laughs> that everything fits properly before I try installing. So I'm going to put that in. It should. <clears throat> These are the imperial measurements. We've got a 5 16 Look at that. Beautiful. Okay, that fits. Now this is the anchor bushing. And that should slot in there. There's a little bit of play <clears throat> at the top there, which is normal. And you see these little knurled sort of, well, it's knurling, <laughs> they call it. So that's going to grab into the wood inside. It's already got a little bit of knurling in there. So I sort of just match it up and then I'm going to have to push that in there. I see Oop, by finger pressure I could get it in, which is a good sign. Okay, so I'm going to have to tap that in. Now, you should never bash anything like this with a metal hammer, right? Metal on metal is no good. Now, if you had a brass hammer, <coughs> you probably could do because brass is softer than this steel here, right? So I'm just using, I'm going to try first just this small hammer. It's got a rubber end on the mallet and a plastic one. I always use a little piece of leather few taps and see if it wants to go. Yeah, it's moving. Next thing I'm going to do though is I'm just going to put this guitar so it's resting. The body is resting flat on my leather pad. That way I'm not flexing the neck when I'm banging on it. <clears throat> so I'll give this a few more taps. There we go. Now I'm going to get it flush. That's good. Nice. Now I want to recess it just a little more and I'll take this stud out here. And the factory one <coughs> is recessed just a tiny bit. If you can see that there, you know, maybe a 64th, you know. 0.2 of a millimeter, that kind of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a socket. It's a little smaller than that. And we'll use that. All right, so I have a 5 16 socket here, a little extended socket. What I'm going to do is what I want to do, because it's a little smaller in diameter than the bushing, and I'm just going to give it a little tap, see if it moves a bit. Yeah, it's moving a little bit. I don't want to bash on it too hard without some protection. Now, you could also put in, you know, one of the studs, but then you risk damaging the screws, right? So I want to make sure this is not sticking out, and I can feel it sticking out a little bit. So I'm going to give it a few whacks 
<laughs> with now the problem here is trying to line that up so that I'm hitting just the there we go I don't want to hit the finish at all oh well, that's better okay I'll get that down just a touch more and we'll be done okay so I'm not going to damage the bushing here with some light taps and I'm recessed just a little bit below the top of the body here which is perfect it's exactly what I want so I'm going to get this back on the neck rest and so this is the this was the existing one <laughs> on the other side let's put that in there Oh, sorry, this is the damaged one. We don't want, we don't want that, do we? <laughs> okay. So there's always coming a pack of two. smooth as this side. There could be something in there. I'll clean it out. That's oh, good. Okay, we're in. And I know the owner told me that he likes these studs like right down because then he wraps the strings around. Okay, that is fixed. Okay, so the anchor bushing has been replaced. Now we're going to put the tailpiece on so the owner likes to wrap it around like that and that's why the studs are way down which is good let's see if we can get this on here a little snug fit is not a bad thing okay got that on it's a little snug fit <clears throat> sometimes that's because of the chrome plating on there right but anyhow we're good so i'm going to restring this guitar and we'll be all done. And you might recall that when I took the bridge off, I just made a note of where the treble side was, because sometimes you take them off and then you put them on the wrong way and the intonation's out. Uh, and they're not always screws to the back or screws to the front. It depends on the bridge, so it doesn't hurt. Put a little piece of tape there. There we go. <laughs> Saves a little headache when I'm trying to intonate or do something with the guitar. All right, well, we're all done here. I'm take this little reminder off. So we started off with a <laughs> ratted out stud post here, right? For the tailpiece. And I had to take the bushing out, the anchor bushing out, ordered some new ones and replaced them I replaced both of these studs because they'll match this way. And yeah, so we're all strung up. I didn't do anything to the guitar other than this work. Uh, no setup or anything like that. The owner is looking to sell this on, I believe. So it's uh, strumming up nicely. So good. So that wasn't too hard to do. You gotta have some knowledge and maybe the right tools. And I was a little surprised I got the replacement parts pretty quickly. They weren't inexpensive, <laughs> but they came within uh, two, three days, so that's good. All right, take care. We'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye now.